Welcome to the Coyote Game Day pregame show. I'm Ryan Thies alongside Jackson Snyder here from the Graves Family Sports Complex where the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes are going to be taking on the Friends University Falcons here. And stick right here with us where we have our intensive analysis. Yeah, we've got an in-depth look at last week's win over McPherson along with post-game thoughts from head coach Matt Drinkle and some of the players. And then we'll go ahead and take an in-depth look at this week's contest against Friends. So stick with us. Now the Coyotes are coming off of a 48-7 win against McPherson right here at the Graves Family Sports Complex. Let's take a quick look at those highlights right here. Hash from the McPherson 17. Curran firing the fade left side for Geese and adjusts. He has a grab. Touchdown, Kansas Wesleyan. Coyotes on the board on the opening drive at Gene Bissell Field in the Braves Family Sports Complex. 17 yards, Curran to Geeson. Right, one left. Balthazor sprints out to the left this time. Curran looks his way, then goes to the far side for Vela. Slips an ankle tackle, 35, cuts outside to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Kansas Wesleyan. Whip kick from Weagle will hop back to the 30-yard line where it's scooped up by Thomas for Wesley, and he's got a big seam up the middle. Thomas makes a man miss at the 30, right down the middle of the field. He's going to take it back for the touchdown. Now, Coach Drinkle mentioned kind of the slow start that the offense had against McPherson. They had five turnovers that entire game, but the defense was right there. They forced five turnovers. They were there to pick up the slack for the offense. Yeah, the Coyotes really did struggle in the uh, first half specifically against uh, McPherson with those turnovers, like you said, three interceptions from Jake Curran throughout the whole game, which is kind of uncharacteristic of him. But like you said, the defense forced five t turnovers of their own and picked up that slack. And this defense continues to show what they are worth at, as we get deeper into the conference season, forcing turnovers, holding teams scoreless offensively as McPherson's only seven points came off of a pick six from Jake Curran. And as this defense continues to mesh throughout the season, players continue to step up. Coming into the season, we just had Marquill Jones-Walker and Sequente Marks that were standing above the rest just from what they had accomplished last season. This year, this year, players like Tyrone Wright have stepped up and done way more than what they were asked initially, and it's just been fantastic defensively for Kansas Wesleyan. Yeah, Tyrone Wright had three interceptions by himself against McPherson. That earned him the Defensive Player of the Week for Kansas Wesley and also Special Teams Player of the Week, Londarius Thomas, after his kickoff return. And that was after that pick six, so big momentum shifter there. But that was real big, especially picking up the slack of the defense. Yeah, Londarius Thomas has just proven to be a just an absolutely electric player, both offensively and throughout special teams, as he returned a couple of kicks last year. And now this year, he continued that, returning this one for a touchdown and earning himself the special teams player of the week in the conference. And like you mentioned, it, it was a huge momentum swing coming right after that pick six for McPherson. And that kind of continued to just assert the dominance for the Coyotes as they continued to just push away from the Bulldogs and ended up winning that one by a heavy margin. Now we sat down with head coach Matt Drinkle and he talked about the importance and what the defense and special teams brings to the, the field and as well as the offense and he talked about some other comments as well so here's his interview right here how has really been the mood around the locker room been this week awesome uh we're i'm not being i'm not i'm gonna do a lot of more football stuff now so that's good uh you know last week was homecoming and a bunch of alumni and opening the new stadium and the first game at the stadium with coach Bissell and there's a lot of things going on and uh, they just kind of take away from the going to your office watching a bunch of film and get to work and schedule practice and plan it and all that stuff so uh, the, that's been dialed back a lot and uh, the kids are you know they were very excited about it and we're excited to play the second game on it. Now you got your wish of Jake Curran not winning Offensive Player of the Week. Still had a fantastic game, 308 yards and four touchdowns. But you did have two Players of the Week on defense. Tyron Wright, three interceptions, and then Special Teams Player of the Week, Ladarius Thomas with his kickoff return. How big were those guys in that game against McPherson? Uh, I'll tell you what, the, the defense, it's, it, our defense is, uh, it's nice to see somebody get recognized because we play great team defense. 
you know, Tyrone made some incredible plays. He's, he's a ball hawk, man. That guy gets, he covers a lot of ground very fast. He's one of the faster players in the whole conference, uh, which is impressive because he's a big guy. But those were momentum killing interceptions that he made for, you know, that, that really helped swing the course of the game. And then uh, Londarius, man, that was big because we threw our, you know, we threw a pick six and we had a busted assignment on a screen play that resulted in, you know, Jake has to throw the ball out there blind. So it got ran back for a touchdown. And then we turned around right away, and Londarius broke the big, the big kick return for a touchdown, which was great to see. I know, uh, you know, he did that a year ago, and right now I think we're the only team in the league with a kick return for a touchdown. So that's uh, he, LT does a great job. Yeah, and and with Tyrone getting, you know, acknowledged like that, uh, he, and coming from friends, and friends being the team you're playing this week, not only just Tyrone, but a lot of other guys in our defense as well come from friends. And do you think that this game holds a higher meaning? I know it does for not only our, those three kids, it'd be Marquell, Jones, Walker, Sequente, Marks, and Tyrone Wright all started at Friends last year and, uh, you know, kind of matriculated up here with Darius Jiggets because Jiggets came up here and those guys all played at the same high school together. So they wanted to finish their careers together and we were uh, fortunate to be on the receiving end of that. And they're, uh, I know the game means a lot to them and I know it's going to to the Friends kids and, and uh, the Friends coaching staff, I'm sure. Okay. Um, with Friends being this week, you know, having just a one and four record, and then next week comes Tabor, who is ranked fifteenth nationally. Uh, it's been a conference power. Um, do you think that the team could be looking ahead to Tabor this week and kind of let Friends slip to the background? We can't because Friends is good enough to beat us and Tabor. Uh, the Friends is good. They uh, you, you look at it a little bit. They've struggled win loss wise just from. Uh, you know, they, they got hit really hard with transfers and graduation. They graduated a ton of players, but, you know, Coach Lewis and Coach Welch down there do an incredible job. Those guys are going to pound the ball and be physical on offense, and they are as aggressive as you can possibly be on defense. And uh, they have talented players that are – and Friends is good enough to whoever they play any week, they're good enough to beat you. And the other thing is, you know, they played a Division two school already, and they played a really quality team from the G Pack. so – uh, they're starting to get some momentum and steam rolled up here, to, and, and so we don't have the luxury. If we don't play our best, we will lose this game for sure. And uh, you, you mentioned in your post-game uh, comments from against McPherson that Friends runs a lot of the same schemes that Friends, Friends and McPherson run a lot of the same stuff. Can you, can you touch on that? Sure. They're, offensively, they're two back, and they want to just – they want to put the ball on the ground and come at you and hit you in the mouth. You know, Friends and Mac both do that. And just the difference is I think Friends personnel is a little bit further ahead because they have a coach who's been there for a long time versus Mac who's, you know, they're just there where we were a year ago, really. And uh, so they're a very big ground and pound, hit you in the mouth on offense. And then defensively, McPherson played a ton of man coverage against us, brought a lot of different pressures, which is Friends, the majority of the snaps there, I anticipate them playing in the game, they will have 10 guys within four yards of the line of scrimmage. I mean, they are up in your face, bump and run, blitz, go crazy. And uh, so, so we're, it actually worked out pretty good because Mac was much more aggressive in the game than what they had shown on film. So that, that should be helped with the transition this week. Now, Jake Curran hasn't been sacked yet this season. What can you touch on about your offensive line this year? Those guys are they do a great job. Coach pa uh, Coach Pippinger works with those guys every single day, and we have had a big upgrade in personnel there, uh, and they're playing at a high level. And the other thing that helps too is, uh, you know, Jake is much smarter this year. You know, like I said, he he probably didn't like getting his head knocked off a couple times last year, so he's getting the ball out of his hand much faster. He trusts his old line a lot more, and we're ahead in games, whereas a year ago when we were behind so much so often. He had, you know, he felt like he was forced to make plays. Always so holding on to the ball longer and, and, and a lot, and really got, took some shots. So he's uh, he's making smarter decisions. I think we've been sacked once this whole year. We, you know, Kelly made a bad decision on a ball that, that should have been open or was open. And should have checked it down. But you know, we're running it inside, running it outside, and throwing the ball around a little bit. And uh, the line does a really nice job. It, it, you know. Real consistent, Arias Brown over at right tackle does a great job for us uh, in pass pro. Aiden Olson at left tackle, those are really kind of the guys you got to have. And then inside, we got a freshman playing at Sharif Waba, Maverick Beisner, who's like, I don't know, 50 years old or something like that. He's been, been around the program forever. And then Mario Soto is an unbelievable talent over at right guard for us.
Now it's the second game at Gene Bissell Field at the Grace Family Sp uh, Sports Complex. A little less pomp and circumstances there was last week. So is there going to be a little bit less motivation to these guys, or how have you been instilling that into them this week opposed to last? There are, I believe, seven or eight teams in the whole country right now that are undefeated. So uh, we're one of them. So that we have a chance to continue doing something very unique and very special at this point in time. When you can make it through half your season and haven't lost a game yet, you're, you know, that's a special deal. So uh, I think, you know, one thing we talk about all the time is we'd, we'd play in an empty parking lot if they'd let us, you know, so we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on. It's great. It's great for the environment. It's great for the fans and the community, but we shouldn't need any external motivation for, at this point moving forward uh, to be successful. So, um, it's nice. I, I'll tell you one thing that is really nice. So it, was a, uh, it gives us a chance to meet families and things like that when you know a bunch of people come. But we're going to have fall break. Uh, so once classes get out on Friday, there's going to be a large chunk of the population leaving. So they're going to leave for our friends game and then uh, probably won't be back in time for the Tabor game since it's a week long. So uh, not ideal circumstances from a fan support system. So uh, it is what it is, and we're prepared for that. And talk. Luckily, we you know we talk about those things all the time. So, well, it makes you feel better. We'll be there for both games. All right. Good. And any just last final thoughts coming to the game against Tabor? I mean, friends. Yeah, friends. <laughs> uh, nah, you know, just uh, it'll be. A, I mean, that, this will be a really a true test of where we're at. I think more so than any other games. You know, the Sterling was kind of indicative of that a little bit, and we didn't play great for a whole game you know in spurts i thought we did really well but friends is a traditional powerhouse they're a top 20 team almost every almost annually and the way that they play football is very close to what you're going to see in in playoff games and and you know for sure against tabers we're going to find out when we go against other really physical kids that are great players that are well coached how it goes i'm excited to, this is what this is what you play for this is what you this is why you compete. These are the fun games. All right, thanks, Coach, and good luck. Thanks. Now, head coach Matt Drinkle talked about in his interview how both McPherson and Friends run similar schemes, and they expected McPherson to not run it with the aggressiveness as Friends did, but they were a little caught off guard during the game. It was more aggressive than they thought, and that really could prepare them greatly for Friends this weekend. Yeah, McPherson usually isn't as aggressive as they were in the game on Saturday. They, they brought a lot more pressure. They, they were really rushing the passer, trying to put pressure on Jake Curran, and tried to catch the Coyotes off guard like they did. And I think that kind of stalled the offense a little bit in the early going, but the team calmed down and they, they executed well. And now Friends, like you said, runs a lot of the same things like that. They're very aggressive, very in your face on defense. They bring a lot of pressure. And this Coyote offensive line hasn't really been tested by a defense like that so far this season. And with that test coming at them, it's going to be a great way to see where this Coyote offensive line is at in terms of progression. And now that really aggressiveness that McPherson showed, pressuring Jake Curran a lot, that forced a lot of turnovers, and that's why Jake had as many interceptions as he did. Yeah, the Coyotes, the Coyotes had, like I said, have not faced a, a very aggressive defense like that so far this year. And I think that that game kind of forced the Coyotes to address some issues offensively and find those things that were hard to pick out those those issues that they've had because they haven't played teams that can really force you to make mistakes like McPherson caused them to in that game and now you're going up against a tough opponent with a kind of misleading record in friends at one and four coach Trinkles talked about how they're one of the best one in four teams around and how they've got enough talent to beat anybody and so the Coyotes cannot take this game lightly. They've got to use those lessons that they learned against McPherson and put them to work against Friends and even further down the road this season. Yeah, Friends historically has really owned the, the matchups against Kansas Wesleyan. They've won three of the last four, but this is an entirely new Kansas Wesleyan team this year. Yeah, if, if you look at those last four matchups or so, the Coyotes have lost three of those by very, very large margins. But as you mentioned, the Coyotes are a completely new team. A lot of their defense has come from other schools around the conference, specifically Friends. Three starters for Kansas Wesleyan come from Friends last year in Tyrone Wright, 
Marquel Jones Walker and Sequente Marks and they're going to be raring to go for this matchup they've got a chip on their shoulder and they want to prove something against this team yeah friends one and four overall one and two in conference play they've had losses against Nebraska Wesleyan Southwest Baptist St. Mary and Sterling those are the first four games and finally got a win last week against Southwestern their only conference win but also looking at friends numbers their points per game only 14 opposed to Kansas Wesleyan just over 41 and giving up 28 per game their friends and Kansas Wesleyan only 14 so little similarities there between Kansas Wesleyan giving up points and the amount that Friends usually scores. And now for Friends, their leading rusher, Jesse Rogers, he's fourth in the KCAC in rushing yards per game with 71 and just under a half. He's got four touchdowns on the year, 357 yards and 95 carries. Quarterback Chris Denton, 79 attempts, 25 completed. He's got 370, 307 yards on the season and just under 61 and a half per game no touchdown passes for him and then for Kansas Wesleyan their leading rusher Miles Balthazor he's got 267 yards on the year averaging about four per carry 50 per game he's got four touchdowns by himself and then Jake Curran the three-time KCAC offensive player of the week he's completed 110 passes on the season for over 1,600 yards, averaging 324 per game and 14 touchdown passes. So very good numbers coming from him. Joe Vila, he's been his main target. 30 completions to him, two touchdowns, averaging about 95 a game. So a lot of good offensive firepower here from Kansas West, and they just need to get past the high pressure that Friends is going to bring. Yeah, the Coyotes have got to be able to handle friends on the defensive line if the Kansas Wesleyan offensive line can handle the defensive pressure that's going to be brought give Jake Curran time to make throws to the receiver weapons that he's got the Coyotes will be just fine offensively they'll be able to produce the numbers that they usually do coach Drinkle mentioned how friends likes to bring as many as 10 players on a blitz package or some type of rush on any given play and with that there's going to if you can do some math, there's only going to be one guy in the backfield or in the secondary. And if the Coyotes can expose that one man, there's going to be a lot of open field to that end zone. So if the, if the Coyotes can execute offensively, they should have no problem here against friends. Now we'll take a look at some other things going on around the KCAC. Let's take a look at the standings first. At the top, of course, number 19th ranked Kansas Wesleyan, 5-0 overall, 3-0 in conference. Right behind them, 15th ranked Tabor. 4-1 overall, 3-0 in conference. And then Bethel, 2-2. Two two. Ottawa, 2-2. Two two. Sterling, 1-3 on the year. Bethany, 1-4. And, and then right there, Friends, 1-4 as well. Other games going around the KCAC today. At 1-30, it's Sterling in Lindsborg visiting Bethany. Also at 1-30, Southwestern at 15th ranked Tabor. And then 2 p.m. is Ottawa and McPherson. And at 7 it is St. Mary at Bethel. But right here at the Greatest Family Sports Complex, Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes are looking to stay undefeated here against Friends University. Jackson, any final thoughts? Final thoughts on this one is the Coyotes are just a few games away from completing one of their best seasons in history. We're five games into this season already. They're, they're a brand new team, it seems like, from a year ago. And they're looking to continue that momentum into this game today. And I think that they should have no problem here against the Falcons. So keep it tuned right here to the Coyote Sports Network to listen to Mike Hammond and Travis Reese on the call from FM 104.9. But until next week, I'm Ryan Thies, Jackson Snyder. Roll Yotes.